Hello and welcome to another Creative Motion tutorial. This tutorial we're going to be focusing on um, one of the other kind of sections from a previous tutorial, which was based on the wooden toy car. Um, and with that, we we rigged, um, modelled, lit, rigged, and rendered um, this toy car to follow a path. Um, and within that, we needed to rotate a, a wheel around um, as based on the movement. Um, so we're going to be looking at a few different ways that we can do that. Um, so a few different ways that we can find out the uh, diameter. We're going to look at how we can work out the circumference um, and how that obviously works with all the espresso nodes. Um, and also we're going to look at how we can not only like work out the rotation based on uh, on one axis, but also based on distance as well. Okay, so if we I've already got this simple scene set up here. Uh, which we where we have you know, a rectangle which is a control object and we have a wheel contained just inside that as a child so what we want to do is move rectangle on say if just, just the first example we're going to move it on the x axis here and we want the wheel to rotate um, on the p um, axis on the pitch so what I've already done is I've pulled in rectangle um, so I literally just clicked on um, so I created a an espresso um, null here with an espresso tag on. Um, double click that, open the window, and then just drag these into the espresso window. Dry the rotation based on the position uh, movement. Um, but you know we're we're going to get kind of a, a random rotation. We'll probably get a value that's way too fast to actually use. Um, so you'll probably notice that as you move the, the, your control object, the the wheel will rotate far too fast. What you can do is then just you know you might want to chuck in a you know, math node to kind of slow things down, speed things up, and try try to guess and match you know that rotation, but it's not really that accurate. And um, even with it being slightly out, it can be it can be noticeable. So um, what we need to do is we need to first just kind of calculate the diameter of this. Um, one of the easy ways to do this was would be to select the object, um, and then we can see. In Z, we've got the value there of 192.23, uh, and that's the height um, value of this, the height size of this object. Uh, one of the ways we can do this, we can kind of extract that information through Expresso. Um, so we've this only works on polygonal objects, so this that's why wheels been converted down to polygons. And what we can do is, if we right click, go to New Node, Expresso, General, um, and we go to the bounding box node here. And on this, I pull out object. Um, actually, not on this one. It's the wrong one. Let's just remove that. Um, so on wheel, I pull out object. We link object to object on this. Um, so essentially, what this is doing, this is, you know, referring to the bounding box of this object. So it's creating like a fake bounding box around this um, to, you know, the the, the boundaries. Um, of the extents of this object um, and converting that to you know some kind of vector data so if I then again just go to new node expresso we go to adapter and we go to um, vector to reels here we can pull out the box size into the input um, and the value we want is the y value so if we just read that into this result node there you go you can see We've got that same value. Okay, so the bounding box is pulling out the same size, which is cool. Um, uh, one of the great things about this is what we could do is we could rig this so we have so we can increase the size of this, and you can see that updating there, obviously, um, and decrease the size of this, and also link that this calculation, the speed, the rotation based on the wheel. So obviously, you know. The, the larger this is, probably the slower you know, it's going to move. Um, we can just make sure we just keep all this accurate um, as the diameter changes on this. So that's one way to do that. Um, okay. So essentially all we need to do is just kind of calculate the circumference of this. Um, uh, an easy way to do that, like I said before, would be to take this value here, which is the diameter, so we could just copy this value and um, we'll just delete this for now, and this one. Okay, um, and what we could do here is 
you know, we could create, we'll create a constant. So go to Expresso General um, constant here. Uh, with the constant selected, we we'll use a real value and we'll just paste in that diameter. So this is the diameter at the moment. Okay. Um, and another quick way to do that would be to go to Expresso, we go to Calculate, and we go to the Math node. And we link a constant into one of the inputs, and the other input can be, we'll just call that like 3.14 um, for the value of, of pi. Um, okay, so obviously pi has like several more numbers, but you know, to be more accurate, you can just, uh, you can put the whole number in there. Um, and so we've got the constant, the diameter um, of this, we've got this value here and what we want to do is we want to multiply it as well so multiply by 3.14 um, that will then give us the circumference of this so um, with this selected here uh, what we need to do is feed these values into something called the range mapper so go to new node expresso general um, and go down to calculate maybe range mapper okay so the input on this will be driven basically by the position the exposition so we'll just link that into the range mapper here um, and then we want to pull out the input upper so input upper will will literally be the output so input upper is the circumference value and we'll link that into the range mapper there okay so with the range mapper selected um, what we want to do is have a data type of real for the input uh, okay yeah which is fine we'll just leave that actually as is set um, the output range will be we'll set that two degrees so that's a value of three uh, zero to three sixty. So if the input we've got a value of you know zero to whatever the sum circumference value is. So we can just read that out. Go to general, um, go to result, just find out what that value is. So we can tell that the circumference of that is six zero three. Okay, so that's the feeding. So the range map is taking zero to six zero three, and mapping that then to zero to three sixty. So it's converting essentially the x movement position um, all the way across to um, zero to three sixty rotation for the wheel. So if we just move output that value to the wheel, so you can now see we're actually getting. The, the right speed of rotation for the movement speed um, but the slight issue the fact that it's kind of moving and or rotating in the wrong direction so as we move this way it should really rotate the opposite um, direction um, and we can, we can fix that that shouldn't be too much of a problem um, we could go into create a math node here you know express so general uh, calculate math um, and then just multiply that by minus one. So minus one there. So we link the output to this one, break that, link that into wheel. Yeah. So now we're getting the correct rotation that we need. So you can see the wheel moving. Um, let's just put a, a material on this just really quickly just so we can see exactly what's happening here. Um, so in colour, let's go down to surfaces um, and then go to what have we got here? Checkerboard. Yeah, that should be a good one. Um, and just drag that onto the material. Um, and then we should be able to see this moving just a little bit smoother. Okay, so now we should be able to see this move so as we move this object you can see we've got correct rotation on this um, and this is being calculated just as accurately as the calculation of the multiply here so 3.14 to make this more accurate you could obviously put in 
you know all the digits from pi um, other ways to do this would be to use um, some other nodes so you could use a go to espresso calculate and you could use something like maybe the formula here so with this you can actually put in you could put in pi as an expression um, and it would calculate obviously every single point value of pi um, and then feed that out um, so but you can just go into the reference to kind of work out those calculations but for this um, this value is pretty good for me let's try to drive you know this based on distance rather than just one position value so if we base it on desist on distance <clears throat> what we can do is not have to worry about feeding in that you know one particular axis we can just kind of read values to say that you know this is moved so far you know from this point to this point maybe uh, let's work out the distance and then correspond that distance to the rotation uh, and we can do that by um, using the distance node so if we right click go to new node espresso um, and then go down to calculate I think distance here what this will do is we'll, it will read um, <coughs> the distance between two different points um, um, because we're, we're going to be reading the distance just basically from the rectangle but so if we drop down here and we choose position yeah coordinates we go to coordinates um, position choose position um, and then drop it down again and choose previous position and um, what previous position will be it will be the position on the previous keyframe and position is the position on the current keyframe so we can feed both of those values into the distance node so if we feed position into input 1 and previous position into input 2 okay let's just break this connection here for a second um, and then we link output into input on this now this should give us some feedback so if we try to rotate this yeah you can see what it's doing here uh, at the same time we'll just use a, a result node to see what numbers are being kicked out of this so let's just link that into this and then as we pull this uh, you can see let's just animate refresh on this you can see as we're moving this across what it's doing is it's it's basically saying you know from zero so for me this is zero <coughs> so the first keyframe um, it's trying to work out the distances between but so it's doing it based on the current keyframe and then it's resetting it again because it's pretty much static so it's resetting this value um, so you can see these these move in and it's almost working off of like a speed value um, but this is no good to us really um, because you know it's always resetting that value what we want to do is incrementally add the output of this you know to the current rotation so the way we can do this is if we go to um, wheel here uh, we'll just duplicate this so copy and paste this here and what we want to do is open up um, and pull out rotation P and we want to feed that into a math node so let's just create a new node espresso calculate math and output that value so this is outputting the current value of the wheel the current rotation value of the wheel okay and um, we'll break that connection there and we'll feed that into this math node okay so we want to add these values together which is by default that will do that so what it's doing is adding the current rotation value to you know this distance driven value um, and we should now get as we connect these together we should get an accurate rotation based on di on distance yeah so you can see that so it's based on distance whether it's going backwards or forwards we're getting that rotation and it's, as, as we move it you can see it's fairly accurate as well well very accurate actually um, as accurate as 3.14 can be okay so with this if I was to move it in this direction you can see it doesn't matter what direction I move this in we're getting accurate rotation um, and you can even move it on two axes as once so there you go so you move it diagonally uh, so it's now being calculated based on distance rather than just on one value 
uh, and this is good for like if we want to link this to a spline say um, so let's just go to the top view start drawing in let's then go to the top view start drawing in a spline along tool let's choose the bezier tool we start drawing in a spline say um, and then go back to rectangle here we go to tags align to spline um, and then on this we pull in the spline see what we should get then if we choose tangent tangent so we're getting you know this this rotation value off of every single axis so as it is rotating around and it's moving in different directions which is cool so i hope you found this useful and um, i'll see you in the next one